Men and men shot his older brother to death after an argument over whether the younger brother should go to sleep. Christopher Delgadillo brushed his teeth and returned to the kitchen to get a soft drink. When his older brother Benjamin attacked him, a fist fistfight ensued between the two until finally the teenager was until finally Christopher grabbed a 30 out 6 caliber rifle off the gun arm and shot his older brother in the side of the head. Detectives arrested Delgadillo after they interviewed him and a female acquaintance that had been with him by a 20 year old man. The woman who was not identified said she was now. In 1914, St. Thomas Peggy Connolly tried to break up an argument between her son and his girlfriend at her home Friday night when her son picked up a porcelain table lamp and struck his mother across the back. He then stabbed his girlfriend. A warrant was issued for the arrest of Alonzo Connolly. Retired grocer George Pugolo was indicted last week on a second-degree murder charge Mrs. Pugolo was found Mr. shot to death October 17th in a bedroom of a couple of Arabi homes. Mr. Pugolo was found in another bedroom bleeding from the wrist wound. It is he believed he attempted suicide. On June 21st, 1821, Johan Wojciech stabbed his brother, 43-year-old Mrs. man, Bruce, Charles death. Johnson, was found Please beaten to death a few blocks from his home. The coroner's report said that Johnson died of head injury as he was beaten with a baseball bat. She resisted him. He grew enraged and stabbed her repeatedly in the breast, seven times in all. After arrested, Wojciech made no attempt to deny the murder, at one point saying, God, let her be dead. A complete examination of Wojciech found him to be healthy, rational, intelligent, with no abnormalities except for an enlarged right testicle. On December, on August 27, 1824, Johann Wojciech was executed in a public decapitation. Some spectators were surprised at the small flow of blood from his truncated neck. <laughs> Trouble and happiness. Oh my god, when fools still have their senses, then we're all fools. <laughs> what a bad world. What a beautiful world. Gentlemen! <laughs> Gentlemen! You see here before you a creature as God created it. But he is nothing this way. Absolutely nothing. But now, look at what art can do. Why, he walks upright, wears coat and pants, and even carries a saber. Why, this little monkey here is a regular soldier. So what if he isn't much different? So what if he is still on the bottom rung of the human ladder? Hey there, take a bow. That's the way. Now you're a baron at least. Blow us a kiss. And this little customer's musical too. And gentlemen, inside here you can see the astronomical horse and the little lovebirds. Favorites of all the crown heads of Europe. Well, they can tell you how old you are, how many children you have, what your ailments are. The performance is about to begin. And at the beginning, the beginning of the beginning. You know, I used to have a little dog once who kept sticking around the rim with a big hat. And I thought I'd be good to him and make it easier for him. And I sat him on top of it. And all the people stood around and clapped. How grotesque. How really grotesque. Hey, I mean, you don't believe in God. Hey, if that is fact, I don't believe in God. Just be fast, Project. Hey! You see that? There's Project. You want to go in? Sure, that must be nice in there. You can see that? that? On him. What? But it's a tooth on him. Well, she could wear for a couple of regiments of cavalry. And three drum majors. You see the way she carries that hair? Do you think all that black hair would pull her down like a weight? In those eyes. Oh, like looking down a well or a chimney. Come on, let's go after the Lolly lights. Mmm, Jimmery. Black hands with fiery eyes. Get up here. Yeah! Who wants to show your talent? Show your good reason. Put human society to shame. Gentlemen. 
this animal, this horse you see here before you with a tail on its torso and standing on all its four hooves is a member of all the learned societies, as well as professor at our university where he teaches students how to ride and fight. But that requires simple intelligence. Now, think with your double reason. What do you do when you think with your double reason? <laughs> is there a jackass in this learned assembly? How's that for double reason? That's physiognomy for you. This is no dumb animal. This is a person. A human being. But still an animal, a beast. <laughs> right. Put human society to shame. As you can see, this animal is still in the state of nature. Not ideal nature, of course, but take a lesson from him. But ask your doctor first. It may prove highly dangerous. What we have learned from this is, man must be natural. You're made of dust, sand, and dung. Why must you be more than dust, sand, and dung? Look there at his reason. He can figure even if he can't count it off on his fingers. And why? Because he can't express himself. He can't explain. A metamorphosed human being. Now tell the ladies and gentlemen what time it is. Which one of you ladies and gentlemen have a watch? A watch? A watch? I have a watch, my good man. Here you are. I gotta see this. Oh, there she is. What a piece. Not so fast, boy check. Not so fast. One thing at a time. You'll make me dizzy. And what am I to do with the ten extra minutes that you finished with early today? <laughs> Just think, boy check. You still have 30 beautiful years to live. 30 years. That makes 360 months and days, hours, minutes. What do you think you'll do with that horrible stretch of time? Have you ever thought about it, Boychuk? Yes, Captain, sir. It frightens me when I think about the world. When I think about eternity. Busyness, Boychuk. Busyness. There's the eternal. That's eternal. That is eternal. That you can understand. But then again, <laughs> it's not eternal. It's only a moment. A mere moment. Boy, check, it makes me shudder when I think that the earth turns itself about in a single day. What a waste of time. And where will it all end? Boy, check, I can't even look at a mill wheel anymore without becoming melancholy. Yes, Captain, sir. Boy, check, you always seem so exasperated. Good man isn't like that. Good man with a good conscience, that is. Well, say something, boy, check. What's the weather like today? Bad, Captain, sir, bad. Wind. Feel it already. Sounds like a real storm out there. Wind like that has the same effect on me as a mouse. I think it must be something out of the north-south. Yes, Captain, sir. <laughs> north-south. <laughs> oh, he's a stupid one. Horribly stupid. Boy, check. You're a good man, but boy, check. You have no morality. Morality. That's when you have morals, you understand? Good word. You have a child without the blessings of the church. Just like our right Reverend Garrison Chaplain says, without the blessings of the church. It's not my praise. Captain, sir, the, the good Lord's not going to look at a poor worm just because they said amen over it before they went at it. The Lord said, suffer little children to come unto me. What's that you said? What kind of strange answer is that? Boy, check. You're confusing me with your answers. Well, Captain, sir, um, it's us common people. Um, money, money. Uh, whoever hasn't got money, well, who, who's got virtuous morals when he's bringing something like me into the world? We're flesh and blood, too. Our, our, our kind are miserable only once in this world and in the next. I think if we ever got to heaven, we got the help with the thunder. Boy, check, you have no virtue. You are not a virtuous human being. Flesh and blood? Whenever I rest at the window, when it's finished raining and my eyes follow the white stockings along as they hurry across the street. Damnation, boy, check! I know what love is too, then. I'm made of flesh and blood, too. 
the toy check. Virtue. Virtue. How was I to get rid of the time? I always say to myself, you're a virtuous man. Good man. A good man. Yes, Captain Sir, virtue. I haven't got much of that. Us common people, we haven't got virtue. That's, that's the way it should be. But if I could be a gentleman, if I could have a hat and a watch and a cane, if I could talk her fine, I don't want to be virtuous all right, Captain Sir. There must be something beautiful in virtue, Captain Sir. But I'm just a common good for nothing. Good boy, Jack. You're a good man. A good man. But you think too much. It eats at you. You always seem so exasperated. Our conversation has affected me deeply. You can go now. And don't run so slowly. Nice and slowly down the street. Boy, check here's noises collecting wood with Andres. Somebody picked it up, he thought it was a hedgehog. Three days and three nights, he was in a box. It was the Freemasons, don't you see? It was the Freemasons. Under the spreading chestnut tree, the village idiot stands, amusing himself, watching everyone else, and clapping his hands. Shh, quiet! Quiet! Don't you hear it? Something moving! Who has you now? The one who had you last night cannot have you now. It's behind me! Listen, it's quiet, it's hollow, it's all hollow down there. It's the Freemasons, I'm telling you, it's the Freemasons. Okay. Andres, Andres, look, there's a fire sailing around the sky, the noise coming down like trumpets. It's coming closer. Andres, let's get out of here. Oh Boy, Jack, do you still hear it? No. Hi. So quiet. Like the world's dead. Vinci! You hear the drums inside. Come on, we've got to go. Maria Margaret wants the drum maker. Company! What now is love? Who is it? 
that you drive? Can't. Can't. Roll call. Did you cut with the captain? Yes, Marie. Well, what is it drawing to the trouble? Marie, it happened again, only this time there was more. Isn't it written? And there arose the smoke out of the pit of the smoke of a great furnace. <laughs> quiet, quiet, I've got it. It's the Freemasons. There was a terrible noise in the sky and everything was on fire. I'm on the trail of something, something big. It followed me all the way to the town. Something that I can't understand and I can't put my hands on. Something that'll drive us mad. What'll come of it all? Ron, don't you see? Look around you. Everything's so hard, so fixed, so gloomy. What's moving back here? God goes, everything goes. Gotta get back. And the child? I got the boy. Um, the nuns are there. I say something again. Oh, that man! Seeing things like that. I'm gonna go mad if he keeps thinking that way. Frighten me. Look me here. Why are you so quiet, boy? I'm afraid. Oh, it's growing so dark. As if we were going blind. With that street lamp shining in. Outside. And what is your cradle in hand? Sleep tight, my loving mind. Oh, I can't stand it. It makes me shiver. I've got to go out. The doctor studies his experiment. I don't believe it, Wojciech. And a man of your word. What's that, doctor, sir? I saw it all, Wojciech. You pissed in the street. You were pissing on the wall like a dog, and here I'm giving you three guilders a day plus board. That's terrible, Wojciech. The world's becoming a terrible place. A terrible place. Well, doctors hurt when nature... When nature? When nature? What has nature to do with it? Did I or did I not prove to you that the musculus constrictor vesicae is controlled by your will? Nature, Wojciech, man is free. In mankind alone, we see glorified the individual's will to freedom. And you couldn't hold your water. Have you eaten your peas today? Nothing but peas. Crucifery. Remember that? There's going to be a revolution in science. I'm going to blow it sky high. Urea oxygen. Ammonium hydrochloratum. Hyperoxidic. Boy, check. But couldn't you just try to piss again? Go in the other room there and take another try. Doctor, sir, I can't. But you could piss on the wall. I have it here in black and white. Our contract is right here. I saw it. I saw it with these very eyes. I had just stuck my head out of the window, opening it to let in the rays of the sun, so as to execute the process of sneezing. No, Wojciech, I'm not going to vex myself. Vexation is unhealthy, unscientific. I'm calm now, completely calm. My pulse is beating at its accustomed 60, and I'm speaking to you in utmost cold-bloodedness. Why should I vex myself over a man? God forbid a man. Now, if he were a Proteus, it would be worth the vexation. But, Wojciech, you really shouldn't have pissed on the wall. Doctor, sir, sometimes a person's got a certain kind of character, like when he's made a certain way. But with nature, it's not like that, Doctor, sir. With nature, it's like Boy, check. you're philosophizing again. Doctor, sir... Have you ever noticed anything with double nature, Doctor Sir? Like, like when the sun stops at noon and it looks like the whole world's on fire? That's when I hear a terrible voice saying things to me, Doctor Sir. Boy, you have an aberratio. It's in the toadstool, Doctor Sir. That's where it is. Did you ever notice the shape of toadstools make when they grow up out of the earth? If only somebody could read what they say. Boy, you have a most beautiful aberratio mentalis partialis of a secondary order and so wonderfully developed. Boy, your salary is increased. In a fix of the secondary order, and with a generally rational state, you go about your business normally. Still shaving the captain? Yes, doctor, sir. 
You eat your peas. Just as always, Doctor Sir. My wife gets the money for the household. Still in the army? Yes, Doctor Sir. You're an interesting case, patient boy. Check. You're to have an increase in salary. So behave yourself. Let's feel the pulse. Ah, yes. Three with the chum agent's gift. He told Franz to get the hell out of him. <laughs> so what can he do? Oh, look how those stones shine. What kind of they are? Sleep, boy. Close your eyes. Tight. Stay that way now. Don't move or he'll get you. Sorry, lady. Close up tight. Gypsy lad is out tonight. And he will take you by the hand and lead you into gypsy land. Oh, they must be gold. Oh, I wonder how they'll look on me at the dance. Now, our kind only has a small corner in the world. It's a broken mirror. My lips are just as red as any of those fine ladies with their mirrors from top to bottom. Handsome gentlemen that kiss their hands for them. Not just poor common people. Sleep, boy. Close your eyes. Now stand in. Can run across the wall. I'm tight. I'm looking to the naked mind. What's that? Nothing. There's something shiny in your hands. An earring. I found it. Well, two at a time. I never have walked like that. Am I human or not? Sorry, Marie. Look at the boy asleep. Look at the shiny spots in his pocket. <laughs> Everything under the sun works. Us poor people weave and sweat in our sleep. Here's some money again, Marie. My pay and something from the captain. God bless you, Robert. I'm get back tonight, Marie. I'll see you tonight. Oh, I'm bad, him. I spread myself through with a knife. What a life. Well, we'll all end up in hell anyway. Bad woman in charge. Marie goes to the drum major. Marie! Go on. Show me how you march. Jack Broad has a bull. He is like a lion. There's not another man in the world like that. He's not a prouder woman than me. Wait until Sunday when I wear my helmet with the plume and my white gloves. Damn, that'll be a sight for you. <laughs> the prince always says, my God, there goes a real man. <laughs> a man? You're not such a bad piece yourself. Hell, we'll plot a whole brood of drum majors, right? Let go. Bitch. You just touch me. There's devils in your eyes. Oh, let there be, bro. I care. <laughs> the captain and doctor stopped boy checking the street. Oh, doctor, don't run so fast. Don't paddle the air so if you're sick. You're only courting death that way. A good man with a good conscience never walks as fast as that. A good man. Doctor, permit me to save a human life. I'm in a hurry, Captain. I'm in a hurry. Doctor, I have such fantasies. I'm so melancholy. I start to cry every time I see my coat hanging on the wall. Hmm. Bloated. Fat, thick neck, apoplectic constitution. Yes, Captain, you'll be having apoplexia cerebri any time now. <clears throat> of course, you could have it on only one side. 
In which case, you'll be paralyzed on that one side. Or if things go really well, you'll be mentally disabled so that you can vegetate away for the rest of your days. You may look forward to something approximately like that within the next four weeks. And furthermore, I must assure you that you give promise of being the most interesting case. And if it is God's will that only one half of your tongue become paralyzed, then we will conduct the most immortal of experiments. Doctor, you mustn't scare me that way. People are said to have died of fright. Of pure sheer fright. I can see him now with lemons in their hands to make him cry. But they'll say he was a good man. A good man! Devil's pop and nail. Oh boy, Jack. And where are you off to in such a hurry? Stay a while. Running through the world like an open razor. You're liable to cut someone. <laughs> he runs as if he's had to shame a castrated regiment and would be hung before he discovered and cut the longest hair that wasn't there. But on the subject of long beards, what was it I wanted to say? Wojciech, why was I thinking about beards? The wearing of long beards and the chin, remarks Pliny, is a habit of which soldiers must be broken. Ah, uh, yes, this thing about beards. Tell me, Wojciech, have you found any long hairs from beards in your soup bowl lately? <laughs> I don't think he understands. A hair from a human face. From the beard of an engineer, a sergeant, a drum major. Well, Wojciech? <laughs> but then, he's got a good wife. It's not the same as with the others. Yes, Captain Sir. What was it you wanted to say to me, Captain Sir? Look at him. What a face he's making. Well, maybe not in this soup bowl. But if he hurries home around the corner, I'll wager he still might find one on a certain pair of lips. <laughs> a pair of lips, Wojciech? I know what love is too, boy, check. <laughs> Look at him. He's white as chalk. Captain, sir, I'm just a poor devil. And there's nothing else I have in the world but her. Captain, sir, you're just trying to make a fool of me. A fool? Me making a fool of you, boy, check? <laughs> your pulse, boy, check. Your pulse. Short, hard, skippy, irregular. Captain, sir, the earth's hot as cold in hell, but I'm cold as ice. Cold as ice. Hell is cold, I'll bet. I don't believe it! I don't believe it! Look here, you. How would you like a pair of bullets in your skull? Keep stabbing at me with those eyes of yours. And I'm only trying to help. Because you're a good man, boy, Jack. <coughs> good man. Facial muscles rigid, taut, occasionally twitches, condition strained, <coughs> excited. I'm going. <laughs> Any, anything possible, Captain, sir? The bitch! Anything possible? The weather's nice, Captain, sir! A beautiful, hard, gray sky. You almost want to pound a nail in up there and hang yourself on it. And all because of that little gap between yes and yes again. And no, Captain, sir, yes and no. <coughs> no, big yes or yes, I know. I must think about that. <laughs> Phenomenon, boy, check. You get a raise. I get so dizzy around such people. Look at him go. Long-legged rascals like that step out like like a shadow running away from its own spider. And the short ones only dawdle along. The long-legged ones are the lightning, the short ones the thunder. <laughs> Grotesque. Grotesque. Boy, check in front, Marie. the angels out of heaven. You have a red mouth, Marie. No blisters on it. Marie, you're beautiful as sin. How can mortal sin be so beautiful? Father, your favor makes me talk this way. Damn you! Is this how we stood? Like this? Oh! Or like this? Oh, well, the days long ago, the world loved me to stand in one place, one right after the other. Here's the night nice sleeper walking on, huh? You got horns on your feet. It's nice going on the street, going around in society. Society. 
A lot of people pass by here, don't they? And you talk to them, whoever you want, but that's not my business. Why wasn't it me? You expect me to tell people to keep off the street and take them out with them when they leave? Oh, well, don't you ever leave your lips at home, Maria? It would be a sin. They're too beautiful. But then I guess the loss like a light on them, huh? What loss is telling you? like a cow chased by a horse. I saw him! See a lot with two eyes while the sun shines. Or! Don't you touch me! I'd rather have a knife in my body than your hands touch me. When I looked at him, my father didn't dare lay a hand on me from the time I was ten. Or! Now I've got to show something! Every man's a chasm that makes you dizzy when you look at him, but she looks like innocence herself. So, innocence, there's a spot on you, but I can't prove it. I can't prove it. Who can prove it? The doctor's lecture. Gentlemen, I found myself on the roof like David when he beheld Bathsheba, but all I saw were the Parisian panties of the girls' boarding school drying in the garden. <laughs> Gentlemen, we are concerned with the weighty question of the relationship of the subject to the object. If, for example, we were to take one of those innumerable things of which we see the highest manifestation of the self-affirmation of the Godhead and examine its relationship to space, to the earth, and to the planetary constellations, Gentlemen, if we were to take this cat and toss it out the window, how would this object conduct itself in conformity with its own instincts towards its central gravitations? <coughs> well, boy, check, Dr. Sir, she's biting me. Damn! Why do you handle the beast so tenderly? It's not his grandmother. Dr. Sir, I'm shaking. Excellent, boy, check, excellent. Animals, gentlemen, simply have no scientific instincts. Now observe. For three months, this man has eaten nothing but peas. <laughs> Notice the effect? Feel how irregularly his pulse beats. And look at his eyes. Courage, boy, check courage. A few more days, and then it will all be over with. Feel, gentlemen, feel. Apropos, boy, check. Wiggle your ears for the gentleman. I've meant to show you this before. He uses only two muscles. Let's go, let's go. You stupid animal. Shall I wiggle them for you? Trying to run out on us? There you are, gentlemen. Here you see the transition into a donkey, frequently the result of being raised by women, and of a persistent usage of the Germanic language. <laughs> How much hair has your mother pulled out? recently, for sentimental remembrances of you. It's become so thin these last few days. It's the peas, gentlemen, the peas.
You're a fool. I've got to go after her. She's turning and turning in my head. Oh, they're dancing, Andre. They're dancing. Will she have hot hands, Andre? Goddamn her, Andre. Goddamn her. What do you want? i got to go after her. i got to see them. Aren't you ever satisfied? What's all this for a whore? i got to get out of here. I can't stand the heat. Let me be a real friend and knock a hole in your nature. Forward. I'll knock a hole in his nature. Hell. I'm as good a man as he is. Killing it. Clear on his body. My soul! My soul stinketh of brandy wine. <sighs> and even money passed into decay. Forgive me. But the world is a beautiful place. Brother. My sadness could fill a barrel with tears. I wish our noses were too bottled so we could pour them down one another's throats. <laughs>
street lamp cleaner for kids to wipe my eyes. Everything's dark. Devil, damn you! God. I'm laying my own way. I'll just jump over myself! Where's my shadow going? There's no safety in the channels anymore. I'm trying to move between my legs. I'm seeing my shadow again. It's that shiny over there. Shiny like that. It's making me look at it. I've got to have it! A field near a pond! Um, stop! After the bike and the fiddle, go! Don't stop! Don't stop! Stop your playing! What's that talking down there? What? What? Louder, louder, I can't hear you. What? Stab? Stab? Stab her? The ghost bitch? Stab the ghost bitch dead? <laughs> Should I? Must I? Stab. 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 Do I hear it there too? Does the wind say stuff too? Oh, 
said versus did. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Lord God. Oh, Lord God, I can't. Oh, God, give me only so much strength that I may pray. Make up your mind. How much for the night? Straight and sharp. What do you want it for? To cut your throat? <laughs> oh, you get it as cheap here as anywhere else. You'll die cheap enough. But not for nothing. It'll be a cheap death. Carl, I started it in the light of the sun. But the whore I am. My fin. This will cut more than bread. Too gross. There. There, he says. Like it was nothing. And it's real money. Dog. Frank has to come. Not yesterday. Not today. Oh, it's hot in here. Instead of his feet weeping and he gets washed with her tears and just wiped them with the hairs of her head and anointed them with ointment. Everything's dead. Oh, Savior. Savior, if only I might anoint your feet. The barracks. This jacket's not part of the uniform, but you can use it on this. Sure. The cost was my sister's. And the gold ring. Sure. Got a holy picture here, too. Two hearts, the real gold. Found in my mother's Bible. Said, O oh Lord, with wounded head so sore, so may my heart be evermore. My mother only feels when the sun shines on her hands. Doesn't matter. Sure. Friedrich Johann Franz Wojciech. Soldier. Pray for me. Second Regiment, 2nd Battalion, 4th Company. Born. Peace of the Annunciation. 27th July. Today I am 30 years old, 7 months, 12 days. Look, you really ought to go to the hospital. They'll give you a shock with the powder in it. will cut the fever. You know, Andres, when the carpenter puts those wood boards together, nobody knows who it's made for. Golden flies stuck up there as if they were cotton 
a spider web. And when it wanted to go back to the earth, the earth was an upside down pot. And it was all alone. And it sat down there and it cried. And it sits there to this day, all, all alone. Murray! What? Come on, let's go. It's getting time. Where to? How should I know? A field near a pond. The town must be out that way. You don't want to go yet? Come on, sit down. I've got to be back. You still want to run your feet sore. What has happened to you? You know how long it's been, Marie? You, you know how much longer it'll last? Just get that. Mm -hmm. Supper's not made yet. Why are you freezing, Marie? Still, you're so warm. So warm. The hot breath of a whore. And yet I'd give up heaven just to kiss those lips again. Why are you freezing, Marie? When you're cold through, you won't freeze anymore. The morning dew won't freeze. What anymore. are you talking about? Nothing. How red the moon is. Rising. Like a night watched in light. What are you going to do? <laughs> so pale, <laughs> son. <laughs> Did I make you so pale? Did you forget to comb your hair today, Marie? 
Are you going to twist your braids? Hey! Hey! There! There! Then dive like a stone into the black water. Oh, but it's not that far enough for when they swim. Yeah! There! Oh, oh, but in the summer when they die for muscles. Stop. Huh. It'll get rusty. Why didn't I break a blade first? Beautiful murders you can hope for. It's been a long time since we've had one like this. <laughs> 